Ladies and gentlemen, that man is in a better place than I am. He's at the Clark County Fair in the Commonwealth of Virginia, meeting and greeting the people uh, in the great state that it is. His name is Corey Stewart. He is the one who should beat Tim Kaine uh, and should be the next U.S. Senator from the great Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, Corey Stewart, after all the years that you have served our country, and you have done diligently and done well uh, from Prince William County uh, to Richmond uh, and beyond. Why run for the U.S. Senate now? Because I think that Virginia needs a U.S. Senator who's going to support President Trump. Uh, President Trump has done a, a lot of great things for this country. I think that uh, you know even people who did not support him in 2016 are coming around to the fact that his tax cut his deregulation, his moves to, uh, you know, spur the economy of the United States have worked. Uh, as a result of it, we have the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years. We have the highest uh, uh, wage rate growth uh, in 20 years. We have business investment um, uh, in, in, manu in jobs and future production and, and uh, manufacturing that is off the charts. And we have, unfortunately, in Virginia today, though, we have a United States senator in Senator Tim Kaine, who is Hillary Clinton's running mate, yes. who is an automatic no to everything that President Trump is doing. And Virginia just can't afford that anymore. He's accomplished nothing in six years. In fact, he's counterproductive because he's trying to stop President Trump from reviving this economy. I'm going to go in there and support the president. We're going to get jobs going again. You, you mentioned the economy. There are two different... Virginias. Uh, there is Northern Virginia and it's the rest of Virginia. And Northern Virginia has done exceedingly and abundantly well beyond what they could even ask or think, thanks to the uh, national security, our American defense, uh, and jobs that are being created around the bureaucracy. But areas like Chesapeake, uh, like Rona, are suffering, suffering right now. What would you do differently from Tim Kaine? and how would it apply in terms of success? Yeah, that's a really good question. Well, there's two main things. Tim Kaine voted against President Trump's 355 ship Navy. He voted against the military pay raise. He voted even against the modest increase in the housing allowance for our military personnel in Virginia. You know, that has really hurt uh, Hampton Roads area in particular, Eastern Virginia. Uh, most of those jobs for building those ships uh, are in uh, Newport News. Uh, it has a massive impact in the economy. But here's another big one. We need a president, and with our president is currently standing up against unfair trade agreements that were signed many years ago that have gutted manufacturing in Virginia. I'm going to support President Trump in scaling those back, those, uh, those trade agreements, renegotiating them, bringing back manufacturing. You know, it's already starting to happen. Tim Kaine, of course, opposes all that. He opposes trying to re renegotiate NAFTA and the other trade agreements that have ruined manufacturing. And that has hurt the rest of Virginia, as you mentioned. Northern Virginia is going to be just fine with the government and everything, but it's the rest of Virginia, down in the valley, uh, all the way down to 81, down in Southwest Virginia, Virginia and Southside Virginia. Uh, you know, the city of Danville, Virginia was absolutely destroyed uh, by the trade agreements that Tim Kaine supported they lost 25% of their population when all those manufacturing jobs left. I'm going to stand with the president. We're going to bring back manufacturing to Virginia and to the rest of the country. Mr. Mr. Stewart, you, you mentioned the fact that there is uh, manufacturing being done uh, in Newport News, building of ships, manufacturing in that particular resolve. But a lot of business left uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, to go south on I-95 to North Carolina, and the people of North Carolina want to thank the Democrats uh, of the Commonwealth of Virginia for helping rebuild North Carolina. Uh, is there something that Tim Kaine did uh, that encouraged that, and is there something that you could do to discourage it? Well, you know what, I, the, the fact is, and you're absolutely right about that, Amer uh, Virginia's been bleeding jobs to uh, North Carolina, but it's not just to North Carolina. We've been bleeding jobs to the rest of the world. And the reason that North Carolina has been getting a lot of the jobs that should be in Virginia, that uh, left Virginia, is, is very simple. 
Uh, North Carolina has lower taxes. They have lower and better, more streamlined regulations. These are the things that the president is trying to do for all of the country. That's what I'm going to support him in doing. Because what we know is that when you lower taxes on businesses, when you lower taxes in general, when you reduce regulations, businesses thrive. But Tim Kaine and the Democrats, of course, don't believe in that. They believe that uh, you that and they, they believe in increasing taxes. Uh, when Tim Kaine was governor, he, he attempted to raise taxes Thank four you. times, four times. He's a radical uh, uh, tax raiser, and Virginians are frankly tired of him. Now, and, and I, I hate to just beat the dead horse about taxation, but uh, the Democrats were also very helpful in keeping regulations alive. Dodd Frank and other entities that destroyed the banking uh, processes and destroyed efforts to help small business. How important is small business to uh, not just Northern Virginia, but to all of Virginia? And what should a senator do to help small businesses in those particular regions? Well, one of the first things we have to do is we have to make the tax cuts that were passed uh, in December of 2017 uh, that are benefiting all uh, businesses. But, you know, we have to remember that the, the individual rates uh, were, uh, were, were temporary. So we have yeah. to make those uh, tax cuts, um, you know, and, and most small business people still pay taxes at the personal rate. So one of the best things we can do for small businesses uh, is to uh, make the personal uh, tax uh, cuts permanent, uh, the the, uh, the individual rates permanent. And by the way, I mean, business is already thriving. It's already coming back. And we're only seven months, eight months into the tax cut, eight months. And if history is any uh, sign of what's to come, we're looking at a decade or two of massive economic growth resulting from the Trump tax cut that Tim Kaine voted against uh, just last year. I want to mention to you uh, regarding uh, economic development that in uh, based on race and I'm not trying to bring racism always into the conversation but eight years under Obama blacks were the only group of people that did not do well or better uh, and in fact there is higher unemployment amongst blacks and Hispanics uh, and it doesn't matter what state you're in or commonwealth you're in are, are there things that Tim Kaine should have done to induce greater uh, economic activity in urban communities and black communities and Hispanic communities and are there things that you can do uh, that will change the outcomes for individuals who are Hispanic black and so on yeah well I mean there's a lot of things that can be done um, you know number one we really have to uh, reform our higher ed system right now you know we have a system where you know there's this pressure for every kid to go to college you know the thing is you know you don't have to go to a four-year get your bachelor's degree to be success in fact uh what we're seeing now is that what we should be promoting more is career technical education yes. uh, and and uh, that means reform reform and that, that really has a direct impact on our minority communities and our blue collar communities uh in america uh, and, uh, and and look, not all kids are meant for college, and that's okay because you know these guys that are coming out, uh, you know, and they're in the, you know these, these students who are coming out, you know, with uh, with you know certifications in welding and HVAC uh, and and home health care and so forth, they're making more money than your average college graduates now, yeah. and the college graduates have a lot of college debt. Uh, so I think that one of the things we can definitely uh, specifically help with. Uh, especially for blue collar uh, folks uh, is is promote more of that uh, and help more kids to go and help and get a, get a, uh, a skill uh, certification that can really help them to get a good job. Uh, we're talking tonight with Corey Stewart who is running for U.S. Senate out of the great commonwealth of Virginia and there are questions that are pouring in into the chat room and I don't want to uh, keep my questions going I want to include those. Bonnie Williams who is a commonwealth uh, citizen is asking what about corporate greed on the backs of account holders should the execs earn their pay like we do uh, and that might be in line with what Elizabeth Warren was introducing in the US Senate today uh, holding corporations accountable do you believe that that is a reasonable thing uh, holding corporations accountable to taxpayers or is there an, a uh, is that just applying socialism Marxism 
uh, to the uh, structure of the America's economy? Well, I mean, you know, that's that's the way they talk about it. But here, there, there's a sentiment here that um, that is something we should discuss, and that is that. You know, really, the elites, and when I talk about the elites, I'm not just talking about Democrats. There are elites, there are Republican elites, Democratic elites, uh, corporate elites, and they, they're just happy with uh, the way things are right now. They're just happy as long as that, you know, their their bread is getting buttered, as long as they're okay, they're, you know, the heck with everybody else. And I think uh, the fact is we need to make sure that we, we continue to have a thriving economy that benefits everybody. And right now we have just that. These tax cuts uh, that were mostly aimed uh, at, uh, at, at, uh, at businesses and, you know, and a lot of small businesses now, are they're, they're thriving. And that brings everybody up. It brings everybody up. We need to focus in on that. Uh, I'm not one to t you know, talk about, you know, I don't believe in class war warfare. I don't, I don't like that at all. But the one thing I will say is that there is a, a, uh, an elite in this country which does not want anything to change. They don't. Uh, they've got their their uh, elitists uh, in Washington, the establishment and, uh, on both sides of the aisle. They don't want it to be want that to change. We're talking tonight with Corey Stewart, who is running as you for the U.S. Senate GOP nominee for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, another question coming in: uh, Prince William County uh, doesn't have metro. Uh, should we expend more government money on Metro? Uh, you, sir, uh, it, it, have we spent enough on trains going nowhere? Well, look, you know, we, um, we all need better transportation. Prince William County needs better infrastructure. All of Virginia does, especially in Northern Virginia. There's so many, uh, you know, we got a massive uh, problem with, with infrastructure and the lack of roads and highways. Uh, and capacity. Now the thing is though is that Metro at the end of the day is very very expensive. It's highly subsidized by the government um, and at, it's very quickly becoming antiquated because in the, in today in the age of uh, battery powered automobiles and autonomous vehicles uh, and the other advances in the automotive industry uh, the, the, it's the roadways that are going to be needed most not 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 metro not fixed rail the problem with fixed rail the problem with metro is it only takes you uh from point a to point b it does not take you from your home it does not take you uh from the from the end of the train line to your work uh and so it, it's got to be um uh uh you, you know the future really is in in automotive technologies exactly i want to ask you we want to change the the, the title uh, around from uh, the end that talks about the economy and economic activity uh, to one that deals with the social issues. There are individuals in uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia that believe that you are not compassionate, uh, that you are a hardcore mainliner. You you, you want to take. Uh, the benefits of Social Security away from people. You, you want to take away all the good stuff that government's done away from the people. Can you speak to those particular matters? Well, I don't want to touch Social Security and I don't want to touch uh, Medicare. You know why? Because people paid into that. That was a pension fund. It's a trust. People paid into it their entire lives and now they're retiring under the expectation that what they paid in, they're going to get back. And that's only fair. I don't want to touch Social Security. I don't want to touch Medicare. Now, when it comes to Medicaid, however, and we're yeah. talking about health care for the poor, uh, I, I, I don't think it's working very well. Obamacare has been a dismal failure. You know, because of the expansion of Obamacare, uh, we've had a, a really huge spike uh, in the cost of health care insurance in this country. Premiums have shot up so much uh, that a lot of families can't afford them. Uh, a lot of people have lost their insurance because of Obamacare. And in the case of deductibles, people are paying three, six thousand dollars even more. And it's and at that point, if you're paying that much in health care for a deductible, uh, at some point, it's, it's not even real insurance, it's like fake insurance. So the, the best way that we can help people who need help and everybody deserves good health care. But the best way to do that is through the market. 
not the failed Medicaid system, but it's certainly not the failed Obamacare. When you say Obamacare failed. Well, let me be devil's advocate here. It failed not because it was socialist in nature. It failed because the Republicans didn't support it. Would it have succeeded if Republicans had supported it? Well, the uh, the thing is, it passed uh, without a single Republican vote. And you know why? Because Republicans knew it was going to be a disaster. Uh, and uh, it, it is a disaster. It, you know, go to any room, any room in America and, and uh, full of uh, people and ask this question. Was your health care better? Was it more affordable before or after Obamacare came into place? And everybody will tell you that America's health care system has gone downhill, both in terms of the cost and the quality, ever since Obamacare was passed. You, you mentioned the fact that things have gone downhill. Well, I want to transfer this conversation to the veterans, our, our beloved veterans who have taken care of us, some that we've known and some that we did not, uh, who protect our country, who protected our country, came home with the expectation of being supported under the GI Bill and having their health care needs taken care of at the VA. Well, the VA is a disaster, and it wasn't until last May that President Trump signed into law access to private health care uh, for veterans. Is that enough? Is there something that you would like to do for veterans uh, when you get to Washington, D.C.? Yeah, I, our veterans deserve the very best health care. And uh, right now, they're waiting in lines that are far too long. They can't keep their, their doctors. Uh, President Trump has put in some recent reforms which allow, uh, which would allow veterans uh, to keep their doctor. Uh, and we've got a long, long way to go in terms of not just the reform of the VA, but, uh, but to uh, you know, allow our veterans to select uh, positions outside of the VA system. Uh, so we've got a long way to go. I want to ask you about Brett Kavanaugh. There are Democrats who are running around in Chesapeake, in Newport News, in Richmond, uh, in Northern Virginia, and they're telling African Americans, uh, Hispanics, and especially women, that if Brett Kavanaugh is appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court, Planned Parenthood would go away, abortion would go away, health care for women would be destroyed. Are you the destroyer of health care for women? <laughs> you know, that is such a, you know, the, the, a lie that is taught, you know, told by Democrats. I mean, look, Brett Kavanaugh is supported by everybody who knows him. He's got, he's got not only the support uh, of, you know, uh, of uh, Harvard Law School, but he's also got the support of the dean of uh, the law school at Yale University. Hard, yeah. Not exactly a conservative, uh, but they all say that he is eminently qualified. But you can rest your, uh, you know, you can you can bet on it that um, uh, that uh, Tim Kaine is going to vote against Brett Kavanaugh because Tim Kaine votes against everything that President Trump does. Everybody who he nominates, Tim Kaine is an automatic no. He's against things, even if they're good for Virginia. If they're good for Virginia, but if they were proposed by the president, Tim Kaine votes no because he hates the president. He's got this this uh, you know burning desire to, for um, you know to try to you know to get back at him because you know because President Trump beat him and Hillary, uh, so that that's no that's not the right kind of attitude that we need in a United States senator. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your hectic campaign schedule out of Clark County uh, State Fair. Uh, just want to ask you one last question: What sure. is the difference between Tim Kaine and Corey Stewart? when it comes to America and the Commonwealth of Virginia in 2019, uh, if when it comes to the U.S. Senate, what would be the major differences? I think that America is headed toward a great, great um, resurgence. And I think that we are because we have a strong president. I think that we are because our, our economy is improving. I think that we are because wages are improving. We have a president who's going to put law and order at our border and keep out criminal illegal aliens. We have a president that wants to improve every aspect of our lives, and he's willing to take a lot of beating for it. I'm going to support him. Tim Kaine's going to try to undermine him. That's all he's ever done. I'm, I'm, out, I'm out to support the interests of this state because I think uh, that Virginia has a long ways to go. We have a lot to offer this country. 
uh, but we need to be supporting the president and we and we can do that but we need the right united states senator and that's why i'm asking for everybody's vote on november 6th cory stewart.com cory stewart.com cory stewart thank you so much for taking time out of your hectic schedule we hope to have you back before election 2018 god bless you sir god bless you too thanks a lot thank you ladies and gentlemen it was a tremendous honor to have cory stewart with us we will be back and I hope I did a good job. Let me know if I did I could did I ask your questions? That's important, isn't it? We'll be, <laughs> it's my show. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen.